We finally filmed all the miniature footage, so today I'm going to show you the art of composting. No, no, sorry, uh, compositing. Compositing the filmed material into the final shots. We'll start with this shot of the supplies hanger that you already saw how we filmed, but now let's examine how I composited it layer by layer. I'm using After Effects for my compositing work, and I started with the beauty pass of the hangar gate opening. The first thing I needed to do was to key out the green and create a hole so that we can see outside. For the outside world, we filmed a separate pass of the NASA building. I also had to key out the green screen, and I comped it into the correct place. Behind it, I placed a video of the sky. In front of the building, I added an animated American flag that's flapping. It's, it probably won't be really seen because it's so tiny, but it's in this place in every other shot of the NASA building, so I gotta keep track of the continuity, right? Next, I added some people standing on the stairs. More about them later. I also rendered a few videos of helicopters just, you know, flying around, and I added one in the sky. Random flying things like helicopters or birds always give a lot of life to the shots. So these were all the elements, but it doesn't blend well with the original footage, right? So let's do some color correction. I added a yellow tint to the outside, which already helped a lot, and then a layer of fog. It's, it's just a solid layer with some transparency, but it gives the illusion of some dust in the air and visually pushes the outside world even further to the back. It's the atmospheric perspective, right? These windows still had some green screen color in them, so I tinted them closer to the sky color. And I brightened the ground in the hangar. Now it was time to put in our actor. He was filmed on green screen in the studio during the principal photography. I keyed him out and placed him into the shot. Right now it looks fake, and I'm sure everybody knows why. There's no shadow on the ground, and without shadow there's no contact of the feet with the ground. So, during filming I cut out a silhouette of the actor on my laser cutter, and we placed him into the miniature to get a feel for the type of the shadow he would cast. We wanted this long, dramatic shadow, but the problem was that in the shot he was moving, so the shadow needed to move as well. So I had an idea to do it with the help of a 3D software called Blender. I set up a very simple scene, I used a white plane for the ground, I imported the footage of the actor, and behind him I placed a spotlight. As he was walking in 3D space, he was throwing the accurate shadow on the floor. So I rendered this animation and brought it into the After Effects. But I didn't just set this on Multiply and darken the illuminated ground that way. That would be scientifically incorrect. I found a frame at the beginning of the footage, where the gates are still closed and the ground is dark. But there is still some information in the darkness. And then I used the shadow render as an alpha map for this, to exclude everything else but the shadow part. When placed into the shot, this looks correct because this is the actual shadow that the camera filmed, and not some fake mumbo jumbo shadow that we generated. I hope this was clear, because it was hard to explain. Now it was time for the final touches. We filmed a separate light pass for the ceiling, so I added it in. This pass was filmed to illuminate the shelves closer to the camera. The hoist was also filmed as a separate element and added to the top of the gates. And as a cherry on top, I added some volumetric effects for some additional dramatic flavor. This is how the shot looked before the final color grade. And since we wanted to make this film in black and white, this is going to be the final shot. So as you can see, the attention to detail is crucial in this job and it's quite time consuming. So at least one or two full days of work to make this shot, you know, perfect. And altogether I think I had about 75 different VFX shots in this movie. Let's quickly do another one. This is the front side of the same hangar that I built as a miniature. And naturally the first thing to do was to key out the green. Of course, look, key keying is not as straightforward as it seems. You get all kinds of holes and the edges are not straight. So you need to fix it all the time by duplicating the layer and then masking all the missing parts back in. It's, it's tedious. Then I needed the sky again. I quickly realized that for almost every shot I will need some kind of a sky, so I started filming them. I live in the hills above the city and I have a really nice view from the balcony going all the way to the horizon. So I would film the sky whenever it looked interesting. Sunny skies, cloudy skies, pink dawns and bloody sunsets. Over the couple of months I filmed about 40 different skies in every part of the day that we would possibly need. Boop! And this is one of them. Next, I had to figure out what to put on the sides behind the hangar. And of course, I could have just taken some buildings from the photograph or, or built them in 3D, but that's not cool. So one day I got the idea to try and paint some buildings with acrylics on acetate sheets. 
I painted a big hangar, some smaller ones, as well as some water towers and street lights. I filmed them on a piece of green paper and keyed them out. So now I had these elements that I could just throw in the background in every shot. I really didn't know if, if this would work or not, but it proved very useful and perhaps even brought a bit of that painted old-timey feel to the shots, which is always welcome. This particular shot was only missing the actor and it was done. This is the shot of the parking lot during the NASA press conference. You can see the building is sharp, but the foreground vehicles are blurry. We couldn't technically have everything sharp at the same time because the scale was too small, so we shot the building first and then the vehicles separately. That way everything was in focus. Next I added the sky. I used the painted buildings and a water tower in the background and placed a helicopter in the sky. Since the movie is taking place in Florida, one other thing that was in almost every shot were the palm trees. We had the cheap plastic trees from eBay and they worked okay for the faraway trees, but not for the foreground. So I bought a couple of more expensive and more detailed trees and we filmed them in front of a blue screen because their, their leaves are green and I would rotate them during filming to get a plethora of different angles. Plethora. And then I could just plant them wherever I wanted into shots. But this shot was supposed to depict a busy day of the press conference. But there was nobody here. So we had to do one additional day of filming just for that. We called all our friends and told them to bring any clothes they had that looked like it was from 1960s. Of course nobody had any, but we also had some leftover costumes from the filming. And we just filmed people in different poses, taking photos, talking to each other. After a few takes of people just talking, everyone got bored of course, so they started doing funny improvs. And of course everybody was filmed a few times, this guy was our camera operator during principal photography and this is him again, just in a different clothes. So with all of them filmed, I could then isolate them from the green screen, arrange them into rows like this and then easily populate my empty miniature shots. But we also needed some foreground people doing more specific actions. So here we filmed our sound guy managing some cables and him and another guy were placed here uh, at the pickup truck. There were also the cameramen on the roofs of the vans that needed to be filmed in the correct low angle. I composited the cameraman into the shot and then the shot was done. This is one of the insert shots that we filmed in my yard. This is supposed to be a presidential limousine, but it's actually Dino's Audi. So Dino had to stand in front of the hubcaps and cover them with his legs because they were too modern. We wanted to put another car in the background, so I filmed a miniature uh, limousine that we had and placed it into the shot. And uh, it worked pretty nicely. The dog. We needed some shots of the dog in the film. And anyone who filmed with animals knows it's quite a challenge. In the first shot, the dog needed to sit and follow the car with his head. Thankfully, the dog we got was trained, so he would sit still. And then the owner just lured him with something so we would get the correct movement of the head. This worked really good, so here's how I composited this shot. When we filmed the car, I was pulling it with the fishing string. So first I had to roto it out. Then I placed a morning sky in the background. A layer of trees. The NASA building was filmed separately as always and the power line was done in 3D. Then I just added the dog and the final shot feels pretty natural. I think what sells it the most is the shadow I added when the car drives past the dog. It just brings them together in the same space. Next we needed him to pee and of course he couldn't pee on cue so the guy was giving him some sweets and at the same time she pulled his leg up. The dog of course wanted her to let him go, <laughs> but was often drawn to the sweets for just enough time to give us a few seconds of usable material when his leg is up. And you can obviously see his red rocket quite well. So in the name of good taste, we framed the shot in a way so that he's in the upper half and there's grass in the bottom half. <laughs> that, that way we could hide his private parts in a logical way. For the peeing effect, we just filmed a stream of water falling from the pierced bottle cap and this was the final shot. But the last thing we needed was the dog to look dead. In the film he's hit by a car, so we needed him to lay on his back and it was one thing he simply wouldn't do. 
He was very playful, so I tried to persuade everyone to actually hit him with a car, but my proposal was voted down for some reason. So it took some time before he finally calmed down and somehow managed to lay on his back. I mean, it's not really a natural pose for a dog to lie in, but we got a few usable seconds. Then I had to erase his color and rotoscope him because he wasn't properly positioned on green screen, of course. Why would it be easy? I added some blood around him and in the final shot he is positioned in the rear view mirror. And then you just put some whimper sounds in the sound mix. And boy oh boy does it work. This is the last shot I would like to talk about, because it's one of my favorites and I think it will nicely demonstrate the whole process of creating a shot from scratch. This shot is part of the press conference scene, but it wasn't originally storyboarded. And that's the case with many shots, you know, during editing you get new ideas or you feel that something is missing, so you add stuff. So one day I was researching some old photographs and I saw this. And it seemed like such a powerful image. Those were the first mobile TV units and the guys would film from the roofs of the vans. So I thought like having a shot like this of some random cameraman would elevate the scene and, and make it more real. Dino immediately loved it as well, and when we saw this image, we figured we could be these two guys on the van. It, it, it could be a good opportunity for a cameo role. So the first thing we did was we went to eBay and bought a miniature van. I designed some graphics, some random TV station, you know, like Luca, Dino, TV, whatever, and I transferred them to the side of the van with decal paper. The next thing was the camera. I found some more pictures, and I liked this camera the most. So I found some 3D model and modified it for 3D printing. These were all the printed parts, which I then assembled and I smeared some diluted wood filler over the surfaces to get rid of the print lines. It also gave it that wrinkled cast iron texture, characteristic of old cameras. The camera was primed with black primer, followed by a blue coat of paint and finally silver detailing on specific parts. A coat of dark wash made it look weathered and used and I glued the same TV logo on it. And one cold afternoon, when it was already too dark to be filming anything, Dino and I filmed the van in front of a green screen. Next, the camera was filmed. And this 3D printed antenna as well. And then, in the last few minutes before dark, we quickly filmed ourselves, just so I could do a rough composite of the shot and see if it even has any potential. The usual thing, you know, the sky, painted buildings, palm trees, all the necessary elements. The shot seemed pretty cool, so a few months later, when we were filming the green screen people, we filmed ourselves again. Properly this time, with correct costumes, uh, ID cards and you know, everything. I switched old us with new us, but I still didn't like the look of the camera and the van. It looked too artificial because it was filmed in the evening and it was too dark and it just didn't look good. I, I guess to most people it might look okay, you know, but, but we filmmakers obsess over each pixel, you know. So again, a few weeks later, when we found the time, we filmed them again, this time in the studio, and we took more time to do the correct lighting. But I didn't like it again. Our shadows were dark, and the van was lit too much on the left side, and I didn't like the position of the camera, and no, it, it just wasn't acceptable. So another day I went out and filmed the van and the camera for the third time, but this time in real sun, because that way you get correct sunlight and the correct shadows on the other side. So this is the first version, and this is the last. It's somehow just better, and I, I don't care what anybody else thinks. And when final color grade adds some of that nice grain and bloom and everything becomes so soft, everything is just magical. I, I really love this shot, it's so clean and strong in terms of composition, and it, and it took us only a few months to make this 3 seconds, you know? Piece of cake. Yeah, that's how it is. Alright, that's it for today. I'm out.